Zach Farmer was the kind of kid you love. He always wanted to give back. A gifted Southpaw. He just lived to be on the mound. And three-time All-American. You don't see that very often in Pike County, Ohio, do you? No, not, not like that. Zach was legendary, playing on this field in Piketon, honored to this day right out front when you enter the stadium. His dad, Larry, coached him. I could feel him when he was playing, you know, me coaching a little bit. You know, like so many others, Larry watched in awe. And you're watching him as a dad live his dream. Oh, absolutely. Best thing in the world. Zach could have gone straight to the minor leagues. Instead, he chose to be a Buckeye. And he just liked Ohio State. He was on his way to greatness there, too. When in April of 2014, Zach got sick. He had flu-like symptoms. It wasn't the flu. Acute myeloid uh, leukemia. Yeah. AML, an aggressive cancer that often kills in months. The diagnosis was devastating. He pulled the cover up over his head. Tough day, that was a tough time. You reliving it? That's hard. Zach was just 19 years old. Now he was facing a cancer that usually strikes someone in their 60s. His dad thought that was odd. It's odd to the doctors, too. Even stranger, the National Cancer Institute states exposure to radiation is one of the leading causes of adult AML. Larry Farmer began to think about his family's home, which was right next to this U.S. government fence that wraps around this. The Portsmouth Gaseous Diffusion Plant, a 3,400-acre compound containing massive buildings designed for one purpose, making enriched uranium, most of it for building up America's nuclear arsenal. In the production of uranium-235 for military use and defense of our way of life. Built in 1952 and closed in 2000, this plant is one of the largest facilities of its kind in the world. Here, enormous amounts of uranium were processed for weapons and later for fuel in reactors. Now, according to the National Conference of State Legislatures, 2.2 million tons of hazardous waste is stored here, including 21,000 metal cylinders containing depleted uranium hexafluoride. In all, 415 facilities and structures on this site are contaminated. And a little more than a mile away on the southeast side where the wind blows. Absolutely. Is that home where Larry raised Zach and the rest of the family? Uh, we lived in a hot spot. A radioactive hot spot. Absolutely. This air quality monitor across the street from Zahn's Corner Middle School is four miles from the plant. In 2017, the monitor picked up Neptunium-237 and in 2018, Americium-241. Both are known cancer causers. The U.S. Department of Energy, or DOE, which oversees the plant and the monitor, disclosed those findings last year. After additional tests revealed enriched uranium inside the school, Zahn's Corner was closed in May of last year. In response to our questions, a spokesperson at DOE's Portsmouth Paducah Project Office wrote to me, stating there is no radioactivity detected above naturally occurring levels, insisting there is no public health or safety risk from radioactive material preventing Zahn's Corner Middle School from opening. The school district's superintendent says the school board made the right decision to close Zahn's Corner. DOE said it was fine. Well, DOE still says it's fine. It, it's not fine. Any level of radiation, in my mind, um, is not something that's suitable for children. Larry Farmer's family home was four times closer to the plant than Zahn's Corner Middle School. I blame myself for living there. He says his son talked to him about that. We probably lived in the wrong place. He said that? Sure. You moved from there? Yeah. Why? I never really moved back in after Zach was diagnosed. Zach endured agonizing treatments. Yeah, I seen him crying. And never seen him cry. Battling to make it back to the mound. That's all he wanted to do. Just get back and play the game. Get back and play the game, yeah. And for a brief moment, it looked like he would. The cancer was in remission.
But in 2015, the cancer came back. Yeah. Within weeks, a doctor delivered tragic news. And she just said, Zach, you're, it's got you. I imagine you cried together. Yeah. Zach Farmer died at 757 on the morning of August 4th, 2015. His father lost more than a son. That was my best friend. Now Larry Farmer looks out over his new property, many miles away from the house where he and Zach once called home. Zach Farmer lost his life to leukemia, but his father believes what caused his son's cancer was drifting in from that plant right next door. What killed your son? Uh, the waste off his eggplant. The Portsmouth Gaseous Diffusion Plant. Sure, that's, that's, my, that's what I think. So you believe the government's responsible for the death of your son? Yeah. The U.S. Department of Energy did not answer my direct questions about Larry Farmer's claims, but in its statement says, radioactive elements picked up by all air monitors on and around the Portsmouth site are below limits set by state and federal environmental laws. You can read DOE's complete response on local12.com. Across Kentucky, crowds gather. Hundreds of people are being packed into a small room. As roosters in rings fight to the death. They don't stop to fight until one bird is dead. This is cockfighting. This is torture and death and for gambling. The crews capturing these cockfights on hidden cameras are part of an undercover operation run by the Humane Farming Association, or HFA, and a group called Showing Animals Respect and Kindness, or SHARK. We have the technology to go undercover. Um, we use our drones. We meet up with SHARK as members launch one of those drones. Holy jeez. In a clearing near Morgantown, this tan building comes into focus. It's a cockfighting arena. So this is a major, major cockfighting operation. Lots of vehicles are arriving. Probably looking at 150 plus vehicles. With lots of plates from out of state. From Illinois, from Indiana, uh, I believe it was Alabama, uh, lots, lots from Tennessee. They have to pay to park. $30, sir. Inside, the betting I got 50 on the red is fast got 100 down here. and furious. It looks like one of those trading floors, right? 50 down here. As roosters bred for battle are coaxed by their handlers to continue to fight, often with fatal injuries. There is nothing natural about any of this. The U.S. Animal Welfare Act is supposed to make cockfighting a felony. But in Kentucky, it's classified only as a misdemeanor. And the language in Kentucky's law is confusing and difficult to enforce, stating it's a crime to be a spectator or vendor at an event where a four-legged animal is caused to fight for pleasure or profit. Roosters, of course, have two legs. Kentucky, unfortunately, is a nexus of cockfighting because of their weak laws. Even in the midst of a pandemic, hundreds of people are crammed into these cockfighting arenas with no protection against the spread of COVID-19. I didn't see one mask, I didn't see one glove, and I saw no one on social distancing. And we're talking a substantial crowd. Right, it is a self-contained Petri dish for a virus to spread. But experts say there's another health issue here that's just as serious. There are types of bird flu uh, that are pr pretty much common in- Dr. Ethan Taylor, a professor of chemistry and biochemistry at the University of North Carolina Greensboro says, birds are a breeding ground for diseases that threaten humans. Salmonella, Listeria, Mycobacteria, Campylobacter. And an avian coronavirus. Chickens and other poultry are routinely killed to stop the spread of disease. In 2015, according to this congressional report, more than 48 million chickens, turkeys, and other poultry were euthanized to stem the spread of avian influenza, which can infect humans. 
Despite that threat, blood and biohazards from the birds mix directly with humans at these cockfights. This handler is blowing on the backside of his rooster. This one is sucking the blood from the neck of his bird. And this man places the entire head of his rooster in his mouth. All are common techniques at cockfights to keep those roosters alive and fighting. They literally like suck the blood and pus out of the back of the, the roosters who are wounded neck because that revives them. One video, That's disgusting. Oh, it's completely. Well, there's every aspect of cockfighting is disgusting. Dr. Taylor believes these cockfights are a biological threat on par with that wet market in Wuhan that gave us COVID-19. Well, it's exactly the same kind of activity, you know, exposing, you know, mixing, humans mixing intimately with animals where there is a high possibility of transmission of pathogens. Is it possible? that a cockfighting activity like this could be the breeding ground for the next pandemic. Could it happen? I think you have to say it could happen. It's certainly possible. Yet despite the risks of contagions and COVID-19, cockfighting continues, no matter how cruel. Look, this is complete insanity. This is absolutely nuts. Dwayne Pullman, Local 12 News. You look good. Well, I feel good. Legendary linebacker Dave Robinson says he has a new lease on life. You seem a little more energetic. I think I am. A far cry from the worries he expressed less than a year ago. I don't get to that point where I don't recognize my friends and don't know where I am. This past winter, Robinson told me he suffered from murky memory, sleeplessness, and agitation, blaming it all on countless concussions he received playing football, including the years he helped lead the Green Bay Packers to victory in Super Bowls one and two. How many concussions do you think you had? Oh, more than you have fingers and toes. Now, for the first time in decades, Robinson says his mind is clearing. You feel better? Yes. More memory coming yes. back. He credits his recovery to treatments he received in this chamber. The treatment is called Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy, or HBOT. It was originally designed to treat divers with the bends, which is why each session is called a dive. I did 40 dives. During these dives, the chamber pressurizes, pushing 100% oxygen into the lungs, which carry that pure oxygen to damaged sections of the brain. MRI images reveal sections of a brain filled with blue, dormant from injuries, lighting up in green with new activity after HBOT. Dozens of studies show HBOT helps heal wounded brains. That means HBOT could be a game changer for players suffering from chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, a degenerative brain condition caused by repeated blows to the head. In 2017, this study examined the brains of 111 former NFL players. 110 of them had CTE. Yet the FDA, which approves HBOT for treating 14 conditions, does not approve it as a treatment for brain injuries, saying there aren't enough rigorous studies to prove it works. Who worries about the long-lasting effects of all those concussions that you've received, even if it's just one? Are you worried? Yeah. Some of the greats of the game, including Robinson, are on the board of the Pro Football Retired Players Association. Led by Executive Director Bob Schmidt, the board voted to try HBOT themselves. We're going to use our retired players to really bring this issue forward. And not surprisingly, leading the way is 79-year-old Dave Robinson, a giant on the field who's already enshrined at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now, Robinson says, he has one more run at greatness to be living proof that HBOT works. Is HBOT going to be part of your legacy now, too? I hope it is. I hope, I hope, when, I, I hope when I'm 100, I still have my memory, and still have my faculties, can still move around, and I can tell people I owe it all to HBOT. I'm Dwayne Pullman for Spotlight on America.